A protein sparing modified fast is something that people do for extreme weight loss. It's quite effective. It's generally done in a medically supervised setting, but that doesn't mean that you can't apply some of what you learned from this video. I've used part of protein sparing modified fasting in my dietary protocols for myself when I went through my own transformation. So I'll share what I've learned, but also share some of the research so that you know how to do this so that you can consult with your doctor if you wish and do it the right way. I do want to make sure you hit that red subscribe button and then also hit that bell icon so you never ever miss a beat. And then I do want to make sure you know I'm not a doctor. This is for informational purposes only. Okay, I had my own 100 pound transformation, but I'm really just some guy on the internet that knows how to speak biochemistry and share that information. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive in really quick. What is a protein sparing modified fast? Well, just like the name implies, you're mimicking a fast. So you're eating only things like lean, lean, lean meat. You're eating things like seafood and maybe some veggies. Okay? You're not having any carbohydrates coming in except for maybe a couple veggies and you're not definitely not having any added fats. What this does is at the cellular level, it sort of mimics fasting. Now don't get the wrong idea. This is not a legitimate clear cut fast but it mimics fasting at a lot of genetic levels and at a lot of cellular levels which we'll talk about in a little bit but it is really reserved for the people that have a lot of fat to lose. It's not something you necessarily want to do to just lose the last five pounds. Okay, it's really geared towards severely obese or at least people that have more than 20 pounds to lose. Here's some basic parameters. Now, this may or may not be perfect for you, but these are the general guidelines that people that do a protein sparing modified fast follow. Okay, you usually are going to be between 0.7 to one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Now, to give you an example, I weigh 185 pounds, so I would consume 185 grams of protein coming from lean chicken, coming from tuna, coming from really lean fish like cod, stuff like that. Okay? That's pretty low calorie because at 185 pounds, it's still putting me four calories per gram of protein at less than 1,000 calories. But here's what's interesting about a protein sparing modified fast. Okay, it's geared for people that have enough fat on hand, enough fat on their body, where their body has no choice but to tap into that stored body fat and utilize it. But the idea is your protein levels are so high that you don't have a lot of protein turnover. You don't break down protein that's in your muscles and protein in your muscles is what drives a lot of your metabolic rate. So there's a lot of positive sides to this and it's one of the reasons why I would periodically do it. Although when I was going through my transformation, it didn't really have a name. I just figured I'm just gonna eat, jack up my protein and reduce my fat. Little did I know I was doing something that doctors were doing. Now generally what you see is a slow reintroduction of carbohydrates and a slow reintroduction of good healthy monounsaturated fats like olive oil and things like that after three or six months. So let's break down a little bit of biochemistry and what's going on here. When you increase your protein intake while simultaneously reducing your fat intake, you upregulate a really cool way of creating energy in your body called gluconeogenesis. What that means is your body takes the protein that you took in and it converts it into glucose for your body to use as fuel. Well, the cool thing is this process of converting protein into glucose takes energy. So you rev up sort of a secondary energy machine that's actually burning more calories than it's creating. So you kind of turned on a second furnace, if you want to call it that. It's pretty interesting. The other piece is that because your carbohydrates are so, so, so low, you're producing ketones. Now, if you wanted to get granular, a ketogenic diet is technically fasting mimicking as well, simply because you're kind of getting the same starvation result. But a protein sparing modified fast gets you there a little bit faster with a little bit more muscle sparing if you're doing it right. But a protein sparing modified fast might get you a little bit more of an accelerated result, although you're not having the fats coming in, so your ketones might not be as high, but it all depends on the person. So what kind of weight loss can you expect? Well, I can't promise anything, but if you look at some of the results from some studies, it's kind of interesting. One study took a look at three month results and they saw on average about an 18 pound uh, drop in fat. That's actually a nice steady rate. That's not too aggressive. That's actually what we'd like to see. And then also that same study took a look at six months and it found on six months it was like between 25 and 30 pounds. That's actually, again, a nice rate. And the nice thing is, that's fat because the protein is keeping the muscle on you, making it so that that muscle can continue to burn fat later on after you're done with the diet. Remember, this is actually a diet, not a lifestyle. This is something that you wanna do periodically, possibly with a doctor's supervision. 
before I go into the next study, which was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, let's talk about what kinds of proteins you might want to bring into the mix, because this does play a role. You typically want to not be having the fattier cuts of protein. You want to kind of avoid the ribeye steaks. You want to avoid the New York strips. You want to go for the lean fillets. You want to go for the lean poultries, like the chicken, okay? You want to go for good quality chicken, quality poultry, quality turkey. Okay, then you really want to lean into seafood. Wild sockeye salmon would be okay because it's going to be lower fat content than say Atlantic salmon. Uh, wild caught cod would be great because it's very, very, very lean. Uh, scallops, shrimp, anything that's going to be lean protein. I recommend ButcherBox if you haven't used them before. I'll put a link down below. They're an online meat delivery company. Generally, you're going to find better prices there than you would at the grocery store too. So I highly, highly recommend them. They're who I use. They get delivered right to my door. It's like super convenient because I get sick and tired of going to the grocery store all the time. So I highly recommend it. There is a special link if you watch these uh, videos, if you watch my channel, special link down below for ButcherBox. Check them out. Now jumping into this American Journal of Clinical Nutrition study. This was a six week study that took a look at 15 obese individuals and it found that throughout this journey, they had very little metabolic turnover of protein. What that means is that their bodies were not breaking down protein and excreting it as what's called urea nitrogen. This is very cool because this demonstrates that a protein sparing modified fast does indeed somewhat prevent muscle from breaking down even in a pretty serious caloric deficit. What's interesting is this study was a 500 calorie protein sparing modified fast. That's low, that's very low calorie and more low, lower calorie than I would typically recommend, but what do I know? I'm just a guy on the internet, right? So that works, but I would be afraid that they'd have a good degree of weight gain, which kind of leads me into this International Journal of Obesity study, which found that generally when people do a protein sparing modified fast, they regain about 50% of what they lost. Now at first that sounds really scary, but when you consider that most people that go on diets, about 80 to 90% of them regain all the weight back to begin with. So a 50% standard is actually much better, but if you wanna pick it apart, you can pick it apart just like you can anything on the internet these days. Now what's really cool though, is this other study, this one I'm talking about right now, found that if subjects did between 800 and 1200 calories with a protein sparing modified fast, they still had tremendous weight loss results, but they didn't regain as much. More importantly, they strategically and in phases implemented carbohydrates. So once they got to their weight loss goal, they would do a few months of adding maybe 60, 70 carbohydrates a day, and then they'd increase it up. And they found that when they did this, even after 39.5 months, there was only generally at most like a 40% regain. So 40%, we improved 10% just by adding those calories. Now the point is, is that you can get a lot of benefit from this protein sparing modified fast, but it's important that you don't just go off of it cold turkey and go right back to eating what you were before, because of course your metabolic rate's gonna change, even if you maintain muscle, which has a good degree of thermic effect. Now one thing we do have to talk about to make sure that this is very, very, very understood is there was a study called the Minnesota Starvation Experiment and it looked at very similar things to this and it concluded that it was dangerous and not good. But there was one big glaring thing that is different. The Minnesota Starvation Experiment was looking at very low protein and pretty much no meat. In fact, I think no meat at all. It was trying to simulate what people would have in concentration camps and stuff like that. A little bit of rice, a little bit of starch, here you go, survive not highly structured, very regimented, good quality protein. So I don't know if we really want to apply that because it doesn't clearly add up. And then there's something else kind of funny sounding called rabbit starvation. And rabbit starvation is something that we've known about in the research world for a while because it took a look at like old explorers, right? Not literally old explorers now, like I, I know plenty of old explorers, but like explorers from 100 years ago, 200 years ago. When they would go out into the woods and they would go hunt, they would, in the wintertime, pretty much have to eat rabbits. Well, rabbits were very lean. So in essence, they went on a protein sparing modified fast because they ate lean rabbits for a long time. Well, a lot of them got sick. A lot of them had issues. High protein, kidney issues with, yeah, what the heck? Well, here's the big issue. These people that were doing that were already lean. If you don't have fat for your body to tap into, yeah, you could start having some ammonia buildup, you could start having some serious catabolic issues that actually can increase your urea nitrogen, cause some issues. So if you're super, super, super lean already and you're kind of starving and you're out hunting rabbits, well then yeah, when you eat rabbit meat, a protein sparing modified fast, it's probably not the best solution. These guys needed some fats, they needed something. So anyhow, this is something you can do. Try it out. 
Talk to your doctor. Again, don't take my word for it. I'm just some dude, but I'll see you tomorrow.